Hey, I'm Cole Gaben, and in this video I'll be giving you a little walkthrough of how you can add in-app purchases to your Expo and React Native apps. Let's get started. So I've designed an app here called Absurd Anecdotes. It's a pretty simple app. It lets you complete fill-in-the-blank stories, or more commonly known as Mad Libs, and then it shows you the completed story once you've filled in all of the blanks. Let's take a look at a UX flowchart I've made to see how the app works and see if we can find some opportunities to include the in-app purchases. To start, the landing page will have three buttons. At the bottom, the View Source or Learn More button will just bring you to the GitHub source code page. Nothing too complex there. On top of that is a button to purchase the upgrade. This upgrade will let you play unlimited rounds of the game with a one-time charge. This is called a non-consumable item since it can only be consumed or purchased once. The user will be presented with a pretty straightforward modal to complete the payment, and once they do so, they'll be granted permission to play unlimited rounds of absurd anecdotes. And who wouldn't want that? Finally, the most important part of the app is the gameplay functionality. The app will automatically load a new story and will present the user with the blank words they'll need to fill out. Then the game has to decide if the user can play the game, and there are two conditions for the user to be able to play. First, if they've not yet played today, they'll still have their one free daily game to play. Second, if the user has purchased the full upgrade, then they'll be able to play unlimited times so they will also be able to play. If the user can play, they'll be shown the full story. If the user cannot play, they'll be presented with a modal from which they can purchase the one-time play pass. If they choose to purchase a one-time play pass, they'll be able to play one more time. The one-time play pass is consumable since it can be purchased more than one time. Once the user purchases the play pass, they'll be able to play again and see their new story. Now that we've walked through the whole UX flowchart, let's go over what opportunities for in-app purchases we've identified. First, we have the one-time play pass that users can purchase for 99 cents. The one-time play pass can be purchased as many times as the user desires, so it's a consumable purchase. Second, we have the unlimited upgrade that can only be purchased once for $9.99, and as such, it's a non-consumable purchase. If you'd like to take a closer look at the UX flowchart or the IAP opportunities, they'll be available on the Project GitHub page. Now let's hop into the code and implement these in-app purchases. Here we have the monetization controller class. This class will operate as a singleton, with only the main instance being used throughout the entire codebase. We'll be implementing the following three methods. First, the hasUpgraded method will be used to determine whether the app knows if the user has purchased the upgrade. It is possible that the user has purchased the upgrade that the app doesn't know. In that case, the user will have to restore their purchase. The restoreUpgrade method is used for that exact purpose. It will interact with the App Store merchant to determine whether or not the user has in fact purchased the upgrade in the past, and it will then store that information to the device. Finally, the buy method will do the actual purchasing of a product. The buy method itself is static and private since it's a high level abstraction of the actual purchasing process that is used by both the public buy play pass and buy upgrade methods. Let's start off by implementing the has upgraded method. To store persistent data to the device, the app uses the React Native Async storage package. I'll call get item on the async storage module to get the has upgraded property. Since React Native Async storage stores all items as strings, we'll have to wrap this in a JSON parse to convert the string to a native JavaScript object, which in this case will be a boolean. And that's it. Nice work. Next, let's move on to the restoreUpgrade method. The restoreUpgrade method will return true if the upgrade was restored, and false otherwise. For this method, we'll have to utilize the Expo in-app purchases package. Since this package calls on native code that isn't available in the Expo Go app, we'll first have to add a failsafe that determines whether we're in the Expo Go app, and if we are, then we'll just return false since in-app purchases will cause the app to crash. If we aren't in Expo Go, then we can safely import the Expo in-app purchases package. We first have to call connect async on the in-app purchases module. Once we're connected, we'll have to obtain the purchase history of the user by calling get purchase history async. 
This method returns an object with an array of purchases named results. This results array will then be iterated through to determine if the product ID of any purchase is equal to upgrade, meaning that they have in fact purchased the upgrade. If this purchase has been acknowledged, then we can consider it a valid purchase. We can then update the has upgraded storage property to true, safely disconnect from the IAP merchant, and return true to indicate that the upgrade has been restored. If we don't find a matching result, we return false to say that the upgrade was not restored. Finally, I'm going to wrap all of the IAP logic in a try-catch block, so that in case an error does occur, I can disconnect from the IAP merchant and then throw the error. Awesome! Now we've completed the restore upgrade method. Now let's move on to the buy method that will execute each purchase. The buy method accepts three arguments, the item that will be bought, whether the item is consumable, and finally, what to do on a successful purchase. The onSuccess argument is used by the buy upgrade method since if a user successfully purchases the upgrade, the app should update the has upgraded storage property to true. As we did in the restore purchase method, we have to conditionally import the Expo in-app purchases package and connect to the IAP merchant. Once we've done that, we have to query the items we want to purchase from the merchant. Once the querying has completed, we'll initiate the purchase by calling purchase item async. Although this method is asynchronous, we don't actually need to wait for the response from this method, so we won't put the await keyword in front of it. The next part of the implementation is going to be a little technical, since it will require a more in-depth understanding of JavaScript asynchronicity. So we'll first take a look at a visual representation of what we have to do before going about it. The Expo in-app purchases package exposes the results of the purchase through the set purchase listener method, which accepts a callback to handle the result of the purchase event. Since the set purchase listener creates a new scope within our asynchronous buy method, we have to wrap it in a promise that will either resolve with a value or reject with an error. We can resolve with whether or not the purchase was successful and reject with any errors that we encounter. Now that we know how to handle all that, let's jump back into the code. First, we'll want to return the result of a promise. Inside that promise, we'll create the purchase listener and handle the results. To do so, we'll make a switch statement based off of the results response code. The response code corresponds to the IAP response code enum object that we first have to import from the Expo in-app purchases package. If the response code is OK or deferred, meaning the payment has been deferred to a user's parents on iOS due to parental restrictions, that's a successful purchase. As such, we can call on success and then acknowledge the purchase with finished transaction async. We have to tell the method which result we are acknowledging and whether it is consumable or not. Then we disconnect and resolve with true. If the response code is user canceled, we'll simply disconnect and resolve false. If an error occurred, we'll disconnect and reject with the error. Finally, we'll wrap the IAP logic in a try catch block again and voila, we've completed the entire buy method. Now our app can store the upgrade status restore the upgrade, and purchase items.